Okay, here we go. This problem says find the component form of the vector m such that the magnitude of vector m is 6 and m is in the same direction as this vector v which has this linear combination form. Um, what do you think the first thing we should do here is? Draw a picture, right? Uh, so what we have is vector v has this linear combination, which means its components are negative 3 and negative 6. So negative 3, negative 6, we'll just come down here, right? Here's vector v. What they want is a, ve a different vector, which we're calling vector m, that has a magnitude of 6 and is headed in this same direction. So uh, not to, to, to blow through this too quick, but the magnitude of vector v is the square root of 9 plus 36, which is, so this is approximately 6 point, I don't know, 7? That's, a good, that's my guess. Okay, but the magnitude of vector v is 6.7. So what that means is m, which is going in the same direction, is going to be just a little bit short on that. All right. But to write, to express that, to say it's in the same direction, and to say we want the component form, we need to know the direction of this vector. So that's why they're giving us v. Right? That's why they're giving us this vector. So we can find the uh, direction angle for V. Remember, it's really this. This is the direction of angle V. But we're only going to be able to find this piece right here. So vector V gives us the direction for vector M. So based on that and our formula, and it's okay to use the formula at this point, uh, as long as you have a picture to help you out. This is the direction, I'm going to do this, how about the direction of vector v, theta v, okay? Sometimes we use subscripts like this to give our variable a, a, a specialization or a last name, if you will. Uh, is the inverse tangent of v2 over v1, All right? That's our formula for finding the direction angle. And I think I've still got Desmos open over here. So the inverse tangent... I'm just going to change these ones. The inverse tangent of negative 6 over negative 3 is 63.4. I know it's hard for you guys to see this, but this is 63.4 degrees. All right? So since the formula tells me 63.4 degrees, positive 63.4 degrees, remember, that's telling us this angle right here. Okay? That's giving us the acute measurement between the vector and the closest x-axis, not the positive x-axis necessarily, but the closest x-axis, which, which would be over here. So this is 63.4. So the direction angle of this, act, of this entire vector goes all the way around. It starts here, it swings up through 90, over to here, through 180, and then another 63.4 degrees. So the, the entire angle is 63 plus 180, which is 243.4 degrees. So vector m, which is in the same direction as vector v, also has this direction angle. Okay? It just has a different magnitude. So we're going to take this problem one step further now. So vector m has the magnitude of 6. And it has a horizontal component of cosine 243.4 and a vertical component of the sine of 243.4. This is perfectly fine for expressing component form when you know the magnitude and you know the direction angle. But let's say, just for the sake of example, the one that we're doing right now, what if they wanted to know the actual run. What if they wanted to know the run and they wanted to know the rise? And I knew this, okay? If you're wondering how complicated that's going to be, it's going to be super simple. Because if you look back at one of the videos before, when I multiply this by this, that takes the place of the run, okay? I don't want to, I don't want to jump around too much, but we did this problem earlier, okay? 
we said that writing this for this vector took the place of that number. So those are equal. So if I want to take something that's written in terms of magnitude and direction angle like this, and I want to come up with that, all I have to do is punch this into the calculator because this will have the same value as that number, right? So to get the component form where we're just using real numbers instead of magnitude and direction angle, all I have to do is multiply this number times this. And we can do that on Desmos as well. So we have 6 times the cosine, sorry, times the cosine of 243.4, negative 2.7. And then 6 times the sine of 243.4, negative 5.4. So negative 2.7, negative 5.4. Now, you really want to get your mind blown? How about this? Ready? I, I know, I, I, I realize this, but since we're all uh, sitting at home turning into vegetables right now, why don't we stretch our mind a little bit, just a little bit. Let's bring this back to geometry, because this just occurred to me, right? When you look at these two components, right? Negative 6 is twice as big as negative 3, is it not? In other words, this times 2 is that. If I have a vector that's traveling in the same direction as that, okay, then what I'm forming, here it comes, what I'm forming are similar triangles. Okay, so if this is 3 and this is 6, then when this is 2.7, this is 5.4, because this times 2 is that. So we could think of the concept of similar triangles here to come up with these components as well. But we've also got this format with these formulas, which stays a little bit more in line with vectors right now.